didn't care what color you were, what you had to wear or where you lived. He was humble and full of compassion. Not only did he introduce us to his television neighbor, like Mr. McKeeley of Speedy Delivery, we also journeyed with him by way of trolley to the land of make-believe. It was there we met Lady Appleton, King Friday the 13th, Daniel the Tiger, and so many other live characters in television. For a brief period, the land of make-believe captivated the audience with the storyline, sort of like watching a soap opera. And once Charlie led us back to the real world, Mr. Rogers recapped what we had seen in order for us to apply the principles of the story our own lives. In spite of what was going on in the real world, Mr. Rogers always saw the day or week from this view. And if you know it, I encourage you to recite these words with me. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Neighborly day for beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I've always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please, please won't you be my name? In Luke 10, verse 29, there's an expert in religious law that asked Jesus a simple yet significant question. The question he asked Jesus was this, and who is my neighbor? At the beginning of Luke 10, Jesus chose 72 other disciples in addition to the already chosen 12, and he sends them in pairs to all the towns and places he planned to visit. In this verse alone, Jesus created a new neighborhood with 72 persons residing and to keep them from walking, working, and witnessing alone. They were each paired as next door neighbors. Here's what Jesus says, I'm going to send you out from this neighborhood into another and understand that where I am sending you is larger than what you're accustomed to. Now, although you'll find this neighborhood to be pretty sizable, don't get caught up in the square miles because in the neighborhood you will soon enter, there are only a few neighbors. In other words, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So before you go, pray to the Lord who is in charge of the neighborhood that you will enter so that he will send more neighbors. And as you go, I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves, and we all know that going to a new neighborhood takes some getting used to, and it getting used to us. But take note of a few things. 
Don't take any money or a traveler's bag, neither an extra pair of sandals, and don't stop to greet anyone on the road. When you enter someone's home, pronounce God's peace upon it, and if those who are they are peaceful, the blessing will stand, but if not, the blessing will return to you. Also, I know it's on you to move around after a while, but don't. Stay in one place, eating and drinking what's provided without hesitating to accept their hospitality because those who work deserve their pay. If you enter a town that welcomes you, eat there and heal the sick. And tell them God's kingdom is right on your doorstep. If a town refuses to welcome you, go back to the streets and say the only thing we got from you is the dirt on our feet and we're giving it back. Do you have any idea that God's kingdom is right at your doorstep? Jesus then says, anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me, but anyone who rejects you is rejecting me, and anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. Assuming there was a bit of time that passed between verse 16 and 17, when the 72 returned, the Bible says they were full of joy because demons obeyed them when they used the name of Jesus. But Jesus says, I know, I know, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. The reason those demons obeyed you at the mention of my name was because I gave you the authority over all the power of the enemy which enabled you to walk among serpents and scorpions, crushing them without any injury to you. So don't rejoice because devils were cast out, but rejoice because your names have been written or registered in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. After speaking with the disciples, Jesus had a moment of thanksgiving with God, thanking him for hiding these things mm -hmm. from those who think themselves wise and clever, yet revealing these things to the child. Jesus says, my father has entrusted everything to me, and no one truly knows the son except the father, and no one truly knows the father except the son and those to whom the son chooses to reveal him. Following his time alone with the father, Jesus then returns to the disciples, saying, blessed are the eyes that see what you have seen. There have been many prophets and kings that longed to see what you see. They didn't see. They longed to hear what you heard, but they didn't hear it. Because you have seen what you saw and heard, what you were willing to hear, you've been able to be a neighbor to the despondent, the anxious, the depressed, the downtrodden, the brokenhearted, the possessed and oppressed. You've been equipped and developed into being a good neighbor. But there was one, there's always that one, an expert in religious law that stood to test Jesus by asking this question, Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus, who I believe showed no emotion in this moment, simply asked this man what he already knew. What does the law of Moses say and how do you do? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength and all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus confirmed his answer to be correct. Then he said, follow what you know and you will live. But wanting to do what we are so prone to do, the man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? My friends, although this question appears to be so simple, it's also very significant. Our neighbor is not just the person or person sitting next to us. But there are others that dwell outside the neighborhood in which we live. Matthew 25, verses 35 to 36 says, For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Like this expert of religious law in Luke 10, the righteous ones in Matthew 25 will ask, Lord, when did we ever see the hungry and feed you, the thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we see, 
when did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, and he did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, who were doing it to me. Mr. Rogers, in his episode on learning, said human beings learn best and most from other human beings. It's all a part of being human. And we learn best from people who really care about us, people we really like. As disciples of Christ, we should strive to convey this message that was sung by Mr. Rogers in that episode. It's you I like. It's not the things you wear, it's not the way you do your hair, but it's you I like. The way you are right now, the way deep down inside you, not the things that hide you, not your toys that are just inside you, but it's you I like. Every part of you, your skin, your eyes, your feelings, whether old or new. I hope you'll remember, even when you're feeling blue, that it's you I like. That you yourself is you. You are like. When we yield ourselves to being neighborly, Mr. Rogers says, you'll find that the people who love you best are the ones you learn the most from. Because the more they teach you, the more you learn, the better feeling you have about yourself and the world you live in. At the end of each episode, he holds the broadcast with this song. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. Such a happy feeling to grow inside, and when you wake up, ready to say, I think I'll make a snap of these days. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling, a feeling to know that I'll be back when the week is through, and I'll have more ideas for you, and you'll have things you want to talk about. Make it a special day, a special week, and prayerfully from today's message, we now know who is.